Good evening everyone. Thank you for joining me for this video. In this video, we're looking at yet another very interesting integral property. You can very well show that this right here is equal to that. Generally for the cases where A is numerically less than B. You, you are here looking at a situation where you have a larger number serving as a lower limit and a smaller number serving as an upper limit. You can utilize the negative sign and just essentially reverse those limits and you can generally reverse that interval by means of this negative. Without getting too bogged down between the relationship between A and B, in a general sense you can still show this to be true and you wouldn't really have to worry too much about this relationship. Very practically, just look at this question right over here. You have something like a pi and an x and you're looking at cosine x dx. And we're not worrying about which of these is larger, which one is smaller, or which one should have served as the upper limit and which one has a lower limit. We don't need to get that specified over here. We're just showing that this right here is equal to that. The negative sign just simply allows you to reverse the intervals without affecting the outcome. That right there is a statement that we need to prove. If you were to do the definite integration of this, you would do basically the sine x would come out as the antiderivative and you'd be looking at everything as pi and x upper and lower limit and you do the difference of the two. You do sine of pi which is a zero minus sine of x, whatever that might be, but your end result would be here based on what we're receiving is sine x. That right there is my end result. Now utilizing this specific property, you could have flipped the intervals around, the limits could have reversed in complete 180 direction and you would be looking at something like this as your new integral. But the statement and this property shows that this outcome should equal to this outcome and that's all we are interested in proving. And we can integrate this. We'll have a sine x again come out, but we know we have a minus sitting outside, so we can keep that outside. We have an x and a pi. When we do the definite integration, we still have this minus outside. We're doing a sine x upper limit minus sine pi, which is a lower limit. Sine pi is a zero. You just are basically left with minus sine x, and you've shown that this right here is equal to this right here. You've shown that this here is equal to that right here, and we didn't have to worry too much about this specific issue, whether A was larger than B or B was larger than A. That really is not the crux of the issue. The crux is exactly what we're showing you right over here, that what you are presented with, you can flip the intervals around by means of negative sign, and the outcome should still be the same. But here we're utilizing a practical example to be the source of this verification procedure. Let us show it to you without having to rely on a practical example and just using general logic over here and the general integral procedures. You can utilize the general integral procedure by examining this part right here. You're looking at minus and then a b f of x dx. If you integrate this you have a minus which sits outside and the antiderivative of f of x can very well be this capitalized f of x and then you have an a and a b. You can bring in the upper limit, the lower limit, and you can show that this right here is the outcome. When you open up this parentheses, you end up getting f of b minus f of a. Remember here, we're just showing you the general proof procedure without having to utilize on any formalized examples. Now, if you evaluate this expression over here, right, you have b and a, f of x, dx. Here, the antiderivative is just a capital F of X and you know you're looking from upper limit B and a lower limit A. You do the difference of the two and you do F of B minus F of A and you end up receiving the same outcome in both instances. So here you've definitely proven this statement to be the case. Remember in this video we're showing that this integral property is true and we can prove it to be true. We used a practical example then we use this basic general conceptual example right here. We did so without having to rely on whether A is less than B or B is less than A because this if you wanted to, by all instances, you could very well erase this and still very well show it to be the case. The specific point we want to show is that the intervals can be flipped by means of a negative sign. Whatever reason you might have to do that is beyond the scope of this, but you can merely flip the upper and the lower limits around by means of a negative sign and still arrive at the same outcome with regard to this and with regard to this. And that's right there, the crux of this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.